Welcome to Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. It is nighttime in the Bahamas. It is no less beautiful. We are at the fabulous Atlantis Resort. Big day of basketball. Got started at lunchtime today. The nightcap, Middle Tennessee, off to a 3-1 and one start with the first-year head coach in Murfreesboro against the fourth-ranked Virginia Cavaliers. This is the Bad Boy Mowers battle for Atlantis, the final quarterfinal. I told you, got started earlier today, Florida and Oklahoma in game number one. It was Oklahoma getting the win over the Florida Gators. Followed it up with number 25, Wisconsin, winning 62-46 over Stanford. In our first game of the night session, Dayton wins over Butler 69-64. And we're about to get you set for Middle Tennessee and number four, Virginia. Welcome again to the Bahamas. Alongside Jimmy Dykes, I'm Richard Cross. We're glad to have you along. Three games in the books today. Have we learned anything? Absolutely. First of all, Oklahoma, they were more connected in terms of how they played the game in their voice than they ever were last year. They had a really good win. I was so impressed with, with Wisconsin. Ethan Happ, he's as good of a college player as we have right now in late November. And Dayton in the last game, wow, their, their effort, their toughness, they out-tough a really tough Butler team. Virginia, number four in the country, really good basketball yeah. team. A year ago, they were a really good team. 31-3 and three in the regular season, won the ACC, won the ACC tournament, but then there was the bad yeah. as well. They had a little bad there at the end, didn't they? But the list of good was really long. And, of course, the bad was they're the first number one seed to lose to a 16 seed, and UMBC put it on it by 20 points. But the good was outstanding. 31 wins, a school record. They had 18 wins, actually, against ACC teams. They're the regular season and the tourney title, and they led the NCAA once again in points allowed at 54 per game, and they were led by an outstanding trio. Now, Hunter did not play against UMBC. I don't think it would have flipped the game. It just would have been closer. But Kyle Guy, Ty Jerome, and DeAndre Hunter, those three dudes are hard to guard, and they all do something different, and they do it at a high, high level. So what about the opponent tonight dealing with this Virginia team? Jimmy's got a special guest for a Middle Tennessee scouting report. Middle Tennessee State, they lost two phenomenal seniors last year, Nick King and Giddy Potts. They're gone. Go Sebastian. They're gone. They only returned 10% of their offense from last year. So coming up now, Sebastian, come. A new guy steps up. Antonio Green, a transfer that leads him in scoring. Defeat Antonio Green like you beat Sebastian. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Antonio Green, we will see him shortly in his last game. 22 points in 37 minutes. Double digit points for Antonio Green in all four games that Middle Tennessee has played so far this season. Now, just a little while ago, inside the Middle Tennessee locker room, we heard from Nick McDevitt what his team is getting the opportunity to try and do tonight. Be a disciplined team out there. Play with toughness, play with effort, play with discipline, and go, hey, go out there and have fun. Go out there and have fun. That's what we were talking about a while ago. That's why, this is why you do what you do for opportunities like this. Go you on know, national television, play the top five team in the country. Uh, go out there, seize the opportunity. All right, go out there and have fun. Play hard, play together, go out there and have some fun. All right, let's get back out there. Let's go. Let's go. So that's Middle Tennessee trying to take their shot against a top five opponent tonight, as you heard their head coach say on national TV. We are glad to have you along. That is Antonio Green. He's been really good so far this season. Middle Tennessee in black, Virginia in white. It's time for quarterfinal number four. Felt a little like JPJ South. Bunch of Virginia fans have made their way here to Atlantis to cheer on their Cavaliers. Virginia gives you nothing inside that three-point line. They erase dribble penetration as well as any team in college basketball. They get those gaps and they attack you and you attack them with two hands. Shot clock down to five. Middle Tennessee seeing how hard it is to get that shot up off. Green with the floater. 
And Virginia comes away with it. Take a look at the starting lineup brought to you by Atlantis for Virginia, Jerome, Guy, and Hunter. Very talented backcourt. Braxton Key, the transfer from Alabama. And Mamadi Diakite. Here's Braxton Key, going to spot one up from three, shot an air ball. Also, Middle Tennessee's lineup brought to you by Atlantis. Trump, Sims, and Green, the guards with James Hawthorne and Reggie Scurry. Well, he's a talented player as well. Scurry just drew the foul and has got free throws coming up. Well, you see what Middle Tennessee is going to try to do early in this ball game. You know the hard hedge and the knockout defense is coming from Virginia on any on-ball action. So, Middle already a couple of times. They've set the screen on the on ball and then slid that guy quickly to a wing, right into a closeout, into a paint touch. And what's kind of the theory that UMBC had last year? They just continued to drive the ball, paint touch, kick out, paint touch, kick out. And Middle Tennessee will try to give a big dose of that tonight to Virginia. It is not easy to do. I don't know what your pain threshold is. It's high. Well, that's impressive. Scurries must be as well. He transfers to Middle Tennessee from Missouri State after suffering third-degree burns on his feet from full-body cryotherapy treatment. He was granted an immediate waiver by the NCAA. He's eligible immediately. That's been good for Nick McDevitt and Middle Tennessee this year. Guy pulls up. It's almost automatic. Guy is just, he makes violent cuts off of that down screen action into his jump shot. Our guy averaging 11 and a half points per game early this season. Tough step back from the free throw line for Anthony Crump. Guy lets one fly. He's got five, and it's an early 5 nothing lead for the Cavaliers. He really sticks his feet into his jump shot every time. In the hard two-footed plant and his release is high it's pure and it's consistent every single time phenomenal shooter shot clock at five scurry into the lane and it kicks out extra possession though Middle Tennessee keeps it alive. That was a very impressive escape dribble by Scurry, though, out of that automatic double team you know is coming from Virginia on a low block touch. All right, pack line defense. People hear about it all the time, but sometimes it's like a buzz phrase. What does it mean? Well, it means, first of all, you're the best defensive team in the country year after year. But That's a good start. Yeah, in theory, they're not going to let that ball be driven baseline or even thrown baseline. And if it gets to the low block, there's going to be a constant double team to kick it back out to the perimeter. They fight you on the hard ball reversals, and they give you nothing. They give you nothing off the ball screen action because of the hard hedge that knocks you out towards the timeline. Now, there's a lot of things that go into that, but in a nutshell, they completely delete dribble penetration by playing in the gaps. That's the design, and they execute it very, very well. Tough jumper off the mark for Donovan Sims. Middle Tennessee missed its first couple of shots. There's Jerome on the run out. Richard, I talked in the first ball game about guard combos in the country. I, I think old wins. I think it wins non-conference tournament championships like Maui did tonight with Zach Norvell and then the Gonzaga and Maui. Yeah, and, and Tennessee has old guards. Virginia has old guards. Old wins when it's all said and done. After the elbow this time, Guy pulls down the rebound. 0 for 6 shooting to start the game for Middle Tennessee. Uh, they've taken some hard shots. You have to make Virginia guard you on defense. You have to wear them down because their effort is relentless. You have to make a lot of late clock shots against Virginia. Nice touch from Diakite from about eight feet. His first bucket. My eyes went to Diakite yesterday in practice. His energy, his voice, his productivity, it was tremendous. Reggie Scurry, a couple of free throws coming up. Kyle Guy, five early. Virginia racing out of the gates.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers Builds a Better Mower. Mow with an attitude. Atlantis Paradise Island. Bahamas at Heart. And Domino's. Order online and track your order. We are back in the Bahamas. It was a little earlier today. It's dark outside right now, but you get the idea. Absolutely gorgeous at the Bad Boy Mowers battle for Atlantis. Virginia leading 9-0 over Middle Tennessee. Virginia coached by Tony Bennett, 10th season in Charlottesville. He spent three years on the Palouse as the head coach in Washington State. Took them to two NCAA tournaments in those three years. First four seasons at Virginia got to the NCAA once, but in the last five years they have been a mainstay five NCAA tournaments, including a trip to the Elite Eight, the number one seed a year ago. The job that he's done, and kind of what, it, it took a little while to build it and to get it right, but boy, they've got it right now. How about that 73 and 17 in ACC play over the last five years? Let's put that in perspective. You know what Coach K and Roy Williams are over that same stretch? 63 and 27. This guy is 73 and 17, and he's one of the most consistent men that I know, first of all, in my life. And uh, how, how graciously he handled that loss to UMBC last year. It just resonated with college coaches across the country. I heard so many coaches talk about when they saw Tony Bennett's response to being the first one seed to be knocked out. They kind of reset their heart and reset their, 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 their compass in terms of how to handle adversity. You learn so much from a guy like that every time you're around him. At least I do. Phenomenal. Phenomenal guy. There's a three from the corner for DeAndre Hunter, his first bucket. With all of that said, don't for a second think that Tony Bennett hasn't woken up every single day since that day frustrated about it. He's as big a competitor as you'll find. Oh, absolutely, but he's going to use it to motivate his guys the right way. It's going to be there, but it's not going to consume their heart and consume how they go about this year. I thought Middle Tennessee was very good that time on that automatic post double by Virginia. They sent a cutter hard to the opposite side of the rim, and the pass was right on time. Jace Johnson with the bucket just a moment ago. Nick McDevitt, first season in Murfreesboro. He, he had to have a map just to leave Asheville, North Carolina. He'd been there forever, <laughs> played at UNC Asheville, assistant coach at UNC Asheville, head coach at UNC Asheville, and really had things moving in a good direction there. In five years, 98 and 66, three straight 20-win seasons, but he felt like this was an opportunity he needed to take. You ever been to Asheville? Pretty gorgeous. Beautiful. Oh, Pretty spectacular. Beautiful. It's not Atlantis, but it's beautiful. And uh, he, he has a rebuild job right now at Middle Tennessee State. Kermit Davis was just, man, dominant as a coach for so many years there. He just doesn't have Kermit talent right now, but he loves to get big guards. This is the guy, Nick McDevitt, that they want to change their defenses up and press different situations with big guards, and he'll go after him in recruiting. Hunter's jumper rims out. Antonio Green. Hard to get anything in transition, Richard, on Virginia because they just don't attack the offensive glass. So they don't turn it over. They don't attack the offensive glass. So you're always, for the most part, going against their set defense, which the last couple of years in the ACC, they averaged only allowing you to score 47 times per game. 47 times per game is what you average when you play Virginia with a chance to score. That's incredible. Uh, you kind of went down the road that I was thinking was, okay, when, when you play a team that is so good in their half-court defense, is that what you want to do? Do you want to try and get out and run? But it's like they're able to really take a lot of that as well away. Yeah, they, uh, they control the pace of the game as well as anyone that we have in college basketball. Hunter is a beast playing out that high post against the zone. Braxton Key with a three from the corner. Transfer from Alabama that immediately got eligible. And uh, he gives them a very physical rebounder around the rim as he grabs another one. This is a well-oiled machine, as good of a defensive club as you'll see in November and December in college ball as this Virginia club. All five of Virginia's starters have now scored in this game. 
There's a travel and a turnover by Hunter. A heavy dose of what they call slides is what we've seen from Virginia to get two screeners on those low blocks and then those three guards operate off of it. This time is against a zone and DeAndre Hunter so skilled as a passer, as a player. When he knocks down threes at a high rate, he's an All-American guy. And that trio of those two guards and Hunter, whew, hard to guard. And, and Jimmy, for whatever reason, it just seemed like it was time at Alabama. Freshman All-SEC team, great ball movement there. Well, the, the success that Middle Tennessee has had against attacking the ball screen defense of Virginia, you know it's coming, so you come in with a plan. Their plan is to set the ball screen and then rip run that ball screen guy to some space and let him make the play. They've gotten three good baskets out of it. Middle Tennessee got a turnover, but then gave it right back. So Braxton Key is a freshman at Alabama, 12.6 rebounds, all SEC freshman, injured Missed the first 10 games a year ago. Jack Salt gets in the scoring column. His first points of the game for Virginia. Cavaliers lead it by 13. The only guy bigger on the island than Salt is Sebastian, my sea lion buddy. He is a monster of a guy, 33 in white. Look at him move his feet. And there's that automatic hard hedge over under that Virginia excels at. He steps into the passing lane. Hey Clark, freshman that's getting significant minutes already. Hunter into the lane, draws some contact. He's got free throws when we come back. 13-point lead for Virginia when we get back to Atlanta. Seven little island advice from who else? Jimmy Dice. This will be outstanding. This will be outstanding. Virginia only lost one game last year against ACC. That's just a phenomenal year. And then they get in the NCAA tournament, they get beat by UMBC. I know all year long now, all they're gonna hear in every gym, UMBC, UMBC. They gotta avoid the noise. They got maybe the nation's best backcourt with Jerome and Guy and Hunter's a stud. He's gonna be a future pro. Their defense is, they'll just lock you down. But I just don't know, this, the, the worry they're gonna have all season long, but their regular season matters, you know what I mean? I mean, they got a chance to win the ACC again. But then when the bracket comes out, all they're gonna hear about, are they gonna lose again as a one seed? Just all the noise is gonna come at them, and just, I don't know, just UMBC, they gotta block it out. They just gotta block it out, that's all I can tell you. Just block out the noise. I wish you'd shut up, I could block out the noise. It's 82 degrees here. It's sunny, we got slides, we got pools, we got beautiful people. And I'm soaking wet. Let it give it a rest, Jimmy Dice. Give it a rest, baby. Sit back, relax, live the Danny D life. So, so how is it to live the Danny D life? I'm, I'm not sure. You, 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 you tip yourself over in the Rapid River and you leave chocolate cake crumbs all over the, the place where I'm sitting here. Man, I come in this afternoon to work where Dockage has been the last five hours. There's chocolate cake crumbs everywhere. Can't put my charts down. It's in the seat and this. I don't know. I, I just don't know. I don't know about the guy sometimes. But you know what I'm saying? Like, Virginia has to avoid the noise that they're going to hear constantly all season long. Every, every, every place they go, they're going to hear that chant. But this is a mature team. I think they have a clean heart from what happened to them. I don't think it affects them at all how they play this regular season. Jack Salt with a block, and now Jerome off the mark. That Ty Jerome's grandparents at dinner last night. They were uh, they were excited to be in the Bahamas. Good look there, top of the key. Three point bucket for Antonio Green. He is a shot maker, Antonio Green. He comes in getting up one shot every one minute and 47 seconds that he plays. That is a high volume shooter. Tough shot on the baseline for Ty Jerome. Nice touch. Six points for Jerome. Did you see him attack the baseline with his eyes up, reading the defense, not predetermined at all what he was going to do after that first bounce? I mean, that's as good of a fundamental play as you can make for a baseline drive and a bucket. There's an offensive foul on Reggie Scurry. Richard, watch Ty Jerome's eyes. When he drives, his eyes are up. 
He has not predetermined what he's going to do with that basketball. He's going to read that defense. Virginia is excellent at reading the defenders, either coming off of down screen actions or off of dribble penetrations. A high IQ style of basketball for Virginia. Ten minutes to go, first half. Virginia right now in control, leading it by 14. Jay Huff off the bench into the game. Gets the offensive rebound. Hey, Clark thought about a three, turned it down. Later tonight on ESPN2, it's the Maui Invitational third place game. This one actually could be a heck of a lot of fun. Auburn at 4-1, and one, Arizona at 4-1. Auburn played at Duke tooth and nail last night. They beat Xavier, lost to Duke. And then for Arizona, beat Iowa State to start it. Lost to Gonzaga. ESPN 2 after us and streaming live on the ESPN app. Auburn's got another old backcourt that I think wins. I think they win a lot of games. They get on a deep run in March. Jared Harper and Bryce Brown. We're seeing another combo right here tonight with Ty Jerome and Kyle Guy. I think Jordan Bone, Jordan Bowden from Tennessee are right there. And again, Gonzaga, Gonzaga has to be number one with the next poll with their win on a neutral four over Duke and that Virginia ball movement. Gosh, they just, they know how to play. They attack that nail on offense. They protect it on defense. They always slide so well off of a pass catch. Clark kind of picks his spots. He has not been aggressive. He's had some open looks. That time pulls the trigger. And He's dead center. When you're small like Kihei Clark is for Virginia, you have to do two things. You have to be a terrific distant shooter, and you have to be tough as nails, and this kid is both. And we talk about the fact that Kihei Clark has kind of earned some minutes. Our guy off with the three there. I would think that you've got to be selective if you're coming into this group, given the shooters that they've got and the style of basketball that Virginia plays. If you go and you're just firing stuff up from all over the place, you're probably not seeing those minutes and earning the trust that he has earned from Tony Bennett this early. Yep. And, and you're probably not even recruited to Virginia. I mean, Tony Bennett knows exactly what he's after in that recruiting process. And it's as much as character and selflessness as anything, but they have a very high level of player, but they have an extremely high level of character that Tony Bennett just will not waver from in his recruiting process. Now yeah. that time on Junior Farquhar. You know, Tony Bennett is still the career NCAA three-point percentage leader in college ball. 49.7% of his threes he made as a player. That's crazy. Best shooter in the gym, the coach. Oh, God, might argue with you. No, oh, he, he didn't lose the argument. I'm taking Tony Bennett as to, the best shooter in the gym. Right now, tonight. Stop the game for three minutes and we can determine it. That's the best shooter in the gym. The guy with his hands on his shoulders with some cool sneakers on, coaching the number four team in the country. Just can't get in the paint. Cannot get in the paint. Straight on three there for Antonio, or excuse me, for uh, Paul Gamble. Campbell's got five. He's made several of those this year. It's a big stretch five. Kind of part-time starter over the last couple of years. And he has really shown the ability in the first three ball games to knock down shots from distance. And they just kill you with down screens and curling off of it. If you don't change up how you cover their down screen action during the course of the game when you play Virginia, they are going to chew you up. You can't do the same thing. Down screen after down screen after down screen. They read it too well. From the corner, this time, Gamble short with the three. Did you see Kyle Guy's reaction after he missed that last three? I mean, just visibly frustrated with himself. Kind of swings his arm at the floor. He expects to make every ball that leaves his hand. That's how great shooters are. That's how they think. Sims on the run out. There's an easy bucket for Middle Tennessee. They've not had many of those. 16-point game. 
or how loaded. We talked about Virginia's the number four team in the country. I'm not sure this, they're not the second best team in the country right now behind Gonzaga, but I see five teams in that ACC that are legitimate Final Four slash national champion contenders. Duke could win it all. North Carolina could win it all. Virginia could win it all. Florida State could win it all. Syracuse could win it all. I'll give you another one. Virginia Tech could win it all. That's six teams out of the ACC Whoa. right now that I say could potentially win the entire thing. What a beautiful day in the Bahamas. Every day. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge Black Friday savings. And Atlantis Paradise Island, Bahamas at heart. See that big bucket at the top of your screen? When you're in the splashers pool, you better watch out. Every two and a half minutes, that thing dumps <laughs> tons of water. Even this little guy from Virginia can get wet. You found somewhere else to get wet, though. Well, I've done a lot so far in the first three days here. I was actually the judge on the challenger slide for a while, determining in a winner and a loser. And they didn't always agree with me, but again, I was the judge. My, my time with the Dolphins and the Sea Lions has been unbelievable. I mean, as, as smart as they are, they want, they're wanting to interact with people. And I'm not telling you that it's a huge game tomorrow on the island when the Dolphins take on the Sea Lions at noon. You and I are going to the game. I, I've coached both of them, by the way. I've talked to the Dolphins about boxing off and how important that is, and the Sea Lions in terms of how much you have to talk defensively, and they, they, they both get it. That's sea lion Sebastian you spent some time with. He'd be a load to move out of the paint. Yes, yes, I'm telling you. He's got Jack hey, Salt type I, strength about him. Okay, I know you did the challenge slide, which is the one that's kind of got the ripples. Have you gone leap of faith? I've, I've done everything. Down? I've done so many slides, I'm, I'm not giving them new ideas for slides to build. How'd you like leap of faith? It was a leap of faith. It was fast, was it? Closed my eyes and said a prayer and came out on the other end, and life's good. You didn't even see the sharks that were swimming above no. you in the, in the tunnel. No, you don't you? open your eyes on stuff like that. You survive. There's that slides again that Virginia just 60% of the time they go with their slides offense. They just pound you with the side screens. They curl off of them. They read them. They set flare screens. They give you so many things. You have to dial in defensively. Junior Farquhar running the point right now for Middle Tennessee. Now they choke the post instead of double the post. And they lock up shooters and uh, stay man-to-man -man on that low block touch. They have a couple of things they do defensively, Richard, just to kind of make sure you don't get into a comfortable rhythm with them. And that time they went to their choke post and just locked in man-to-man. -man. Jack Salt picks up his first foul. That's only the third against Virginia in the game. He had the who me reaction after that one was called. Scurry at the free throw line makes the first. Jimmy, you knew coming into this game that, that this was a massive challenge for Middle Tennessee. They're hanging around in the game. But when you think about what in year one Nick McDevitt is having to try and do, coming back into Conference USA first year after Kermit Davis makes the move to the SEC, takes the old Miss job. They had the Conference USA Player of the Year a season ago in Nick King. Right. Giddy Potts was a really good Terrific. Guard. Terrific. It's a Middle Tennessee program that has got a ton of wins against Power 5 programs in the last five, six years. They've only got 10% of their scoring coming back. It's a huge challenge. Yeah, it's a, it's a massive rebuild. But the leftover aroma around Middle Tennessee State basketball was not broken. I mean, he inherited, talking about Nick McDevitt, a very good DNA in the program in terms of their work ethic and, and the things that they value and their core values left behind by Kermit Davis, who is never going to finish last in any league. They're picked last, Kermit Davis at, at Ole Miss at the SEC. He ain't going to finish last in anything. Kermit Davis will not finish last. Well, I don't what know who the guys is. from Butler say to us yesterday, if that's the last if place, the last team, place in the team in the SEC. Well, it is a loaded league, but... Uh, Nick's a patient coach. He's very, very good as a young coach, and he knows exactly what he's after. They're after big guards. They want to have multiple defense look down the lane or, or, or down the line, and they want to score quickly. For Middle Tennessee, good fan base. Yes. Really good yes. fan base. Passionate basketball fan base for both men's and, and women's women. basketball there in Murfreesboro. 
good arena at the Mitchell Center, good support. Just got to get some guys in and continue to try and build depth because not only did they lose five scholarship players, there were four others that left and moved on. Mm -hmm. And the way recruiting works, when a coach leaves, sometimes recruits go with him. So some of the guys that Nick McDevitt was recruiting to UNC Asheville are now in Murfreesboro. Some of the guys that Kermit Davis was recruiting to Murfreesboro are now in Oxford. And Oxford, kind of how the game works. You watch Virginia. When you, when you attack a gap, that help defender attacks the basketball with two hands. They don't reach with one. They aggressively go at the basketball with two hands and just completely try to choke off any type of gap penetration. It's unique to Virginia's system, and they are so good at it. Shot clock winding down. That is a shot clock violation. Did not get it off in time. Bad boy Mowers battle for Atlantis continues tomorrow. Oklahoma, Wisconsin, 1.30 Eastern on ESPN. Dayton will play the winner of this game. Virginia in control right now. That's at 4 Eastern on ESPN. The championship will be Friday afternoon at 2, also on ESPN. Look forward to seeing Florida and Stanford in the first game tomorrow. Well, Butler is going to want to try and bounce back after their loss. Taking a look at the video to make sure that the call on the floor was right, that there was indeed a shot clock violation. I, I was so impressed with, with, with Wisconsin. There's only been like three teams over the last 30 years that started off the season unranked. And if they go by the, by the sound of the shot clock, it's not the clock. They're listening for the horn first. If they can't hear the horn, then they'll go with the clock. But the horn determines did it get out of the hand in time? And I, I, don't, I think they have to wave this one off. Yeah. Which was the call they made on the floor. They yes. called it a violation, did not yeah. count the it's basket. It's no good, yeah. But back to with, with Wisconsin, Ethan Happ, a 16-12 and 12 game today. He's a walking double-double. He's producing numbers as good as anybody in college basketball right now. And Demetri Trice, how impressive was he at that lead guard position for day, today for Wisconsin? They, they don't turn it over. There's no question that Trice, to me, is good, uh, a good enough guard to get you to the Final Four. And their ability to defend without fouling, I, I was really impressed with Wisconsin and how they played the game of basketball. Now, you do know that only four teams actually get to the Final Four, right? Oh, you, yeah. You, you got six ACC teams that could win it they all. They could win it. They could, I'm telling you. Just, just making sure. Yes. Virginia Tech could win it. From what I've seen for them, they could win it. If Chris Clark comes back, and he buys into what Buzz is wanting to get done. I'm telling you, that's, that's a lethal team because they can flat out score and their will to compete is as good as anybody's out there. Guy has his pocket pick, Middle Tennessee in transition. That's a, that's an F1. That and one, one, and we'll see if it's a flagrant. That could be because protection of a vulnerable player is a key emphasis for officials this year. Now it's going to go as a common foul, but. I'm not surprised that they don't go look at it because those breakaway transition guys are in a vulnerable, posi a vulnerable position when they leave the ground. And Braxton T. Key came in with a hard foul, and they could have looked at it because uh, of the potential for injury on that foul. I'm really surprised they didn't. Donovan Sims gets the bucket, gets the free throw, and Middle Tennessee's back with an 11. Absolutely they are. And we've seen some changing defenses by Middle Tennessee State. I think you have to throw something different at Virginia to keep them out of any type of an offensive rhythm in that man-to-man -man offense. How about a 10-0 run for the Blue Raiders over the last four minutes of this game? In the corner, DeAndre Hunter says, slow your roll. Yeah, I'm telling you, if he's a 40% three-point shooter this year, he's as good as anybody in the nation. Eight points now for Hunter. Double-digit points in the first three games of the year for Virginia for DeAndre Hunter. Boy, they're making some hard shots, you, and you have to make them because you're not going to get clean looks. You have to come in the ball game knowing we have to make some hard guarded shots, and Middles doing it. Bam. Spins out, that good, was it? halfway down for Hunter. It comes off his wrist, pure. Five threes in the first half for Virginia. Three minutes to play in the opening 20 minutes. Oh. 
Sims down the lane, overshot it, but Hawthorne there to follow. Hawthorne had to kind of sit and wait his turn a year ago behind Nick King. Junior college player, he's a nice-looking body type. Yeah, that's a really good drive by Sims because, I mean, he handled the hard hedge, and then he went downhill and put Virginia in the defensive rotation, which always allows an opportunity for an offensive rebound. He dumps it off to Hunter, and he's fouled. And Middle Tennessee is hanging this ball game, doing a lot of good things. Speaking of a lot of good things, man, I have done a ton of them. I beat my daughter in the challenge uh, going down the, You're well. the slide. Yeah. You're Got well. a sweet kiss from Malachi the Dolphin, and then Sebastian, my buddy, taught him how to talk on defense. A fabulous week so far in Atlantis. Yeah, good luck with those guys, Adnan. Advocare Invitational tomorrow. Get started at Walt Disney World Resorts. Villanova Canisius game one. Oklahoma State Memphis in game two. Charleston LSU. LSU ranked now 19th in the country. That's at 7 Eastern on ESPNU. Then UAB at Florida State at 9.30 tomorrow night on ESPNU. I want to circle back to Florida State in just a second. But huge news for Memphis basketball yesterday james wiseman number one player in the country decides that he's going to stay home he picks penny hardaway and memphis over john calipari in kentucky there has not been the buzz around memphis basketball that you have now since john calipari was walking the streets in the bluff city yeah wiseman played high school ball for for penny so if you're memphis and you run off a really good coach which is exactly what they did you had to hire uh, penny hardaway now, it may not work out I, I don't know but at least you got to give the guy a chance we do know this he has proven himself to be a recruiter, and if he proved himself to be a coach, then all of a sudden that Memphis job becomes a top 10 job again. It's going to be a terrific story to follow, but that was a huge get now, a huge get for Memphis yesterday in that recruiting battle. Because you know, you know now that was a dogfight in a lot of ways with a kid that good. Uh, and, and Jimmy, I did the last home game that Memphis played last year on TV. And there were fewer than 3,000 people inside FedEx Forum. That's not good. They had 18,000 for Memphis Madness. Yeah. A practice leading into the start of this season. Well, Middle Tennessee, they're, they're not backing down from this fight at all. Not at all. They're athletic. They're getting their hands on a lot of balls right now. If they can con continue to get some paint touches against Virginia, just a few, and force Virginia to react and give them a defensive rotation, then they have a chance to continue to hang in this thing. Nine-point game, 34-25. Virginia leading over Middle Tennessee. Inside 90 seconds to play here in the first half. At one point, Virginia led this game by 21. You see, they don't double the post right now. They, they, they're going to choke the post and trust Braxton Key to go one-on-one -on -one defensively. Little contact, no call. Scurry missed it once, got his own rebound, missed it again. You mentioned Florida State. I, I, I love them. That's an old team that has grown men. And then the Kamaji kid at 7-4. Talked to Mike White from Florida, and they got smoked by Florida State. He said, you can do nothing with Kamaji. He protects the rim. He gets out and denies wings. He moves his feet on ball screens. Florida State is legit. Don't be surprised if they're not in that elite game, uh, elite eight game again this year. Virginia by 11, just under a minute to play in the first half, 36-25. Richard Cross, Jimmy Dykes with you from the Bahamas. Let's get back to something Seth Greenberg mentioned a second ago. People talking about the style of play for Virginia. It's all about defense. But if you look at this team, they are averaging 82 points a game. Is that label misapplied? In terms of can you win a national championship? Well, no, just the, the, the style and, oh, it's not a fun style to watch. You're scoring 82 a game. <laughs> It's a, playing it's, lockdown okay. it's a fun style to watch if you enjoy if you enjoy wins. 
and I enjoy wins. I love watching teams that win. This club racked up 31 wins last year. They only had one loss against the entire ACC last year. And you know what's not, the only thing not fun about it is when you're the opposing coach and you put the game film in and you start figuring out how the heck are we going to beat these guys. That's what's not any fun. One on the shot clock. Hunter flips it up off the glass. Back to a 13-point lead. Middle Tennessee going to try and get a shot off before the break. Got a hurry. Hawthorne too strong with the three. At the half in the Bahamas, Virginia, number four in the country, 38. Middle Tennessee hanging in. They've got 25. We'll send it back to the studio and at Van Burke. Feast Week presented by Lowe's. We are in the Bahamas. That is Atlantis in the background. I think the only thing Jimmy Dykes hasn't done is ride one of those big three-wheel things. The Manta Ray. We've talked about dolphins. We've talked about sea lions. There's some stingrays for you as well. We're going to have to get you in with a uh, stingray or a manta ray before it's all said and done as well. We are here in Atlantis for the Bad Boy Mowers Battle for Atlantis. Earlier today, Oklahoma over Florida, Wisconsin over Stanford. Game one of the night cap, 69-64, Dayton over Butler. And as we get you set for the start of the second half, Virginia leading it over Middle Tennessee. And it, really a first half where it felt like it was going to completely get away from Middle Tennessee. They fought back in it and not maybe as comfortable a lead as the Cavaliers would have liked to have had. Well, I think you're right, Tony Bennett. They, they, they turn the ball over more than they normally do with seven or eight turnovers. But, but Middle Tennessee now, they've got some athletes. they got some speed and some quickness. That has bothered Virginia times. But at the end of the half, these three guys from Virginia, bam, guy knocking down Shots from distance, Ty Jerome, such an under-controlled lead guard and a scoring guard. And then DeAndre Hunter, I said again the first half, and he's making threes at, at a high rate. He's as good as anybody in the ACC, if not the country. And if Middle Tennessee is going to stay in this ball game, they have to continue to move the ball and not go through scoring droughts like they had there in that uh, first half. Take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Atlantis. Guy Jerome and Hunter, that trio that we talked about off the top, 24 points for them. 204 without scoring for Middle Team Tennessee to finish the half. UVA shoots 56%. And remember, though, right before that 204 drought for Middle Tennessee, Virginia went on a four minute scoring drought, then a good defensive start to the second half for the Blue Raiders. How about your boy Hawthorne just erased what was going to be an automatic easy two by Braxton Key? James Hawthorne, 6'7", 210-pound senior from Prentice, Mississippi. Transferred a year ago from Southwest Mississippi Community College. Richard, Middle Tennessee is doing a good job of moving the weak side of their offense. And you have to do that against Virginia, or they just lock in those gaps and just completely choke you off. Look at this kid. Antonio Green just lets it fly with two on the shot clock. Quiet first half for him. He's only got six in the game, back to a 10-point contest. Yeah, but he's a shot maker. A couple of years ago, he averaged 3.5, three-point shots per game. You have to come up early, and the pickup point has to be a lot higher in transition than normal on a kid like this. You understand the pull-up three in transition, but three on one, is that the shot you're willing to settle for? You okay with that? I, I am. In, in this ball game, if you have an open transition look against Virginia, you take it. And that's kind of the recipe that last year when Virginia got beat by Virginia Tech and UNBC, that's what they did. They took the first quick three they had or they grinded away. And this is that quickness and speed that Middle Tennessee still has in their lineup, just the ability to race an automatic two. And then uh, the, the hard threes that this kid can make on. He, he can take and make guarded shots, talking about 55 in black, Antonio Green. Guy left it short, gets the long rebound. But a strong move along the baseline, a blocking foul on Middle Tennessee. Scurry's going to pick up the foul. It's two on Reggie Scurry, and Virginia was lobbying for that basket to count. Don't think that's going to be the case. In fact, they'll put the shot clock at 26. Watch for flex action on baseline out of bounds under by Virginia. There's the pop out, the handoff, there's the flex cut. 
And they got him. The Hawthorne says no. This kid, there is no back down from number four in black. Zero back down right now from this entire Middle Tennessee team. Look at the emotion. Yes. From James Hawthorne. Look at this block. We saw this same out of bounds under action by Dayton in our first game tonight. Just the, the pop out and the flex cut and the down screen. And it, it, it is hard to guard. Well, they're a basket away from putting some game pressure on Virginia. Skirt off the window. It's an eight point game. Virginia at one point led this game 30 to nine. A 21 point advantage. It, the, the game pressure is now on. That's a big 1-3-1 one, one zone that Middle Tennessee is throwing at uh, Virginia. And Guy has the answer on the opposite third of the floor. I mean, how about that for a weapon? You need a bucket. You go to Kyle Guy. The junior from Indianapolis hits one from the wing. Green trying to answer. Now you, you've talked a lot in, in each of our games today about old wins yep. in college basketball. Part of that's because you can't throw at a team anything they haven't seen before. No, you're exactly right. And, and some, sometimes that'll happen early when you haven't got to work against everything in practice situations like you want to. I think you can throw anything at this Virginia team, and they're going to adjust on the fly because of those experienced guards. One and done trip there for Middle Tennessee. They go back to slides. They got those two screeners down low. That's this time it's Hunter and Biakite. And those three perimeter players, Key being one of them now, just works off of it. The simple offense, but the spacing and how they read screens, it's so difficult to stop. 13 points now for DeAndre Hunter. Just when Middle Tennessee put some game pressure on Virginia, Virginia responds like an older team. A top five team should. Sims touched at last. Virginia ball. Virginia, big buckets. And a Kyle guy on the on the far third of the floor. The ball gets reversed from one side to the other, and then just one on one down low. DeAndre Hunter is so good in terms of moving him around different spots on the floor. He's knocked down threes. He's been a nail passer. He's driven the ball, and this time they put him on the low block and let him go to the strong shoulder. Middle Tennessee worked really hard to get back into this ball game. They cut it to eight. It was 38-30. And then over the course of a minute and a half, Virginia rips off a 7-0 run. Back out to a 15-point lead. Tough shot on the baseline. Kyle Guy is headed to the free throw line. Got fouled on the shot. You know, and it all started with Kihei Clark's ability. He's 5'9", he's and he's the smallest guard that Tony Bennett recruited at Virginia. But they're trying to double-team Clark up top. But he knew I can't throw the top of this stuff, so I got to dribble around it and get the ball out of that first trap. Once they did, boom. Easy baseline attack. Our guy last year as a sophomore made 83 three pointers for Virginia. That was fifth most all time in a season. Got a couple from deep tonight. He's got 12 points. Richard, he is a monster talking about Kyle Guy and working off of down screens and flare screens. Any type of a different screening angle you want to throw at a guy that works off as a shooter, this guy is outstanding. Oh, Sims with the floater, he's got seven. You, you, you talk about guy constantly coming off of screens and being set. Can he get his own shot also? Well, I think that's part of it. Part of working off screens is, is to me is the ability to get your own shot because okay. of, of your movement off the ball. Now, is he outstanding off the bounce? He's not outstanding, but he's good enough that you have to go out and respect him. Yakite lobbying, and so are the fans inside the arena. Touched last Virginia ball. When we come back, who's up 15? ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge Black Friday savings. And Atlantis Paradise Island. Bahamas at heart.
Back with you in the Bahamas. It's the Bad Boy Mowers Battle for Atlantis, our fourth quarterfinal game. Earlier today, Oklahoma over Florida. Wisconsin got a win over Stanford. We saw Dayton knock off Butler earlier tonight. Virginia trying to advance to a semifinal game tomorrow against Dayton. Hawthorne steps in, picks one off, kicks to the corner, but he traveled. Got the ball stuck on his hip. Well, he plays hard, though, doesn't he? Hawthorne, very alert defensively off that baseline out of bounds under. Nick McDevitt throws a, a different defensive look on the baseline out of bounds coverage. And now they're back to that big 1-3-1 one, one with Hawthorne up top and Gamble in the middle. And that's a lot of wingspan for Virginia to deal with. Clock goes back to 20 off the kick ball. 10 turnovers by Middle Tennessee. They trail by 15. Got to get below the free throw line extended. Good things will happen to you when it does. Hunter kicks it off. Guy catches, shoots off the mark. Make Virginia work. Virginia is a very disciplined defensive team, but you have to make them work on the defensive end and not settle for a hard guarded shot. Green with the left hand. He, he can score now. And that's just a very aggressive downhill paint touch drive by a scoring guard. Antonio Green's got eight. They've got Hunter working that nail offensively. He and Diakite are taking turns. Ball two that time for Diakite. And who's going to be? Touched last by Middle Tennessee, so it'll stay on the offensive end for Virginia. Antonio Green is 6'2", and he has an urgency about him on the offensive end. And that time, Jerome, with a bad closeout, they just uh, very seldom do you see them get undisciplined with a closeout. He got on the wrong shoulder. Green read it really well and got a good, solid paint touch and a hard two out of him. Ball tipped on the inbound. Steal by Middle Tennessee and Johnson trying to go coast to coast gets the roll. Four, four points now for Jace Johnson, the freshman from Buffalo, New York. You know, he is going to be a college quarterback. And after his senior year, played AU ball one more time and decided to play college basketball instead. Good body on him. Easy there for Diakite. So, was committed to Wagner, Wagner College, yeah. FCS Division One program, and he said, "Yeah, let's do this basketball thing." Clark pushes it. Shortest guy on the floor tried to go all the way in, knocked down. Now the other way, Carl Gamble with the jam. Not a good decision by Kihei Clark. That's the type of play that he got away with in high school, but he took that ball right into size and right, in, right into athletes, and they just chewed him up. And it's an 11-point game. You just feel like Middle Tennessee's a, you know, it, can they get back-to-back -back stops and back-to-back -back baskets right now? It would be huge. Two trips in a row with turnovers for Clark. Well, they, they've done a good job of changing up their out-of-bounds under defense, and they kind of have Virginia guessing right now, and they have some long-armed athletic guys that are very aggressive. They're hungry on-ball defenders, and they're not backing down from this fight at all. I mean, they're facing the number four team in the country. They're in a, a complete rebuilding mode right now at Middle Tennessee State, and they are right in this game. There's a foul on, is it Ty Jerome or is it, are they going to go double fouls here? It is Ty Jerome who picks up the foul for Virginia, and I think they're going to go to the monitor and take another look. About a second ago, you got to 
Let's take a look at what just happened here. It unfolded. Uh, that's just well, it's a it's a reach in foul by Jerome, but to me it looked like then Johnson then kind of squeezes it off his arm, yeah, to, to, to sell it. So they've made the foul call on eleven and White, and I think they can go to the monitor now. And I'm not so sure they won't come out of this with a hook and hold on Johnson. But it's it, it's a reach in foul by eleven and White right there. That, that's a foul. Okay. But then Johnson realizes the arm is underneath and he clamps down on the hold and I'm not so sure it's a hook, but it's definitely a hold. This will be an interesting call by this officiating crew. Keith Kimball, Trey Steins, Chance Moore, the referees in this final quarterfinal. Is it, they have not gone to the monitor yet. I mean, maybe I missed it looking at our own replay. Yeah, no, they, walk, they walked they, over they, and they look didn't at take it. a long okay. look, though. Virginia was ready to go back to the floor, and they're like, nope, not yet, guys. Well, this is such a hard, a hard call for officials to make, and that's why officials need to be involved in the, the, the changing of the rules in college basketball because you put these guys in a really hard spot, impossible to make that call on the fly with live eyes so they go to the monitor and now they're talking through it I, I i i'll be surprised if they don't come out of it with a hook and hold on johnson because he felt the defensive arm underneath him and he clamped down on it and then tried to sell it and they, they can view this as a deceitful play trying to fool fool the officials and that's what they're trying to get out of college basketball No, but if you've got a player, you want him to sell being foul, fouled, right? Well, to, to, to a point, but now you're getting to a point where you can really have an injury to yeah. 11 and white because you have his arm in an awkward position. You clamp down on it. And you don't let it out. and You start turning your body, and that's where an injury can occur. And those are viewed as deceitful plays that need to be out of the game of college basketball. And I think that's, uh, I think that's what we're going to have. We'll get the clarification of it. So we've got free throws here for Ty Jerome. You had the common foul on Jerome, and then the flagrant one for the hook and hold. And so Ty Jerome makes one of the two free throws. That's what I thought it was. It, 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 it's a common foul on 11 White, which is the right call on Jerome, and it's a hook and hold on Johnson. And they went to the monitor to look at. They can't take the foul off of Jerome, nor should they, because it was a common foul. But then right. that, that illegal contact that, again, you can cause injury on that play, and it needs to be out of the game of basketball. And it's, it's not a popular thing with a lot of people right now. I'm in favor of it. I'm in favor of getting it right, which they did. And uh, well, here's what I love: those plays is that you have at least given the officials the tools to go back and look at it and get it right. Absolutely, because you can't ask them to make that call in real time. No, not at all. Well, they move that ball, don't they? Jerome for three. He thought he was fouled. Gets it back, and Cavaliers will recycle the possession. If Braxton Key gives Virginia nothing else right now. He gives them another rebounder. Salt goes yeah. up strong and one. Strong as a sea lion. It's Jack Salt. And I know I was whipping up close today to weigh 560 pounds for the first name of Sebastian. And this is a second opportunity, a hard drive. He is so good, Jerome, at keeping his eyes up on his drives and not predetermining what he's going to do with the dad gun ball. That, that, that's, that's so good. So good by Jerome. In Virginia's last game, against Coppin State. Jack Salt had a streak of 70 consecutive games as a starter snap. And now for the second consecutive game, he comes off the bench. A little bit different look in this starting lineup for Tony Bennett, but no question Jack Salt plays a big role on this Virginia team. Offensive. Yeah. That defender had established legal guarding position. All right, coming up next, when we come back, a unique scouting report on how to defend Virginia. The Dolphins will help. You don't want to miss this. Seriously.
You don't want to miss this. What better place to talk Virginia basketball than here at Dolphin Key in Atlantis? I think Virginia is one of the best teams in college basketball. They're so hard, you agree with me, yes. My buddies Makai and Atlas, defensively they're great, offensively they move the ball. They're one of the best teams in the country. Do you guys agree with Virginia? Yes, I love them, they can win the whole thing. They're led by a couple of guys I think are outstanding at guard. First of all, Kyle Guy, he is tremendous at working off of screens on that baseline. He's a terrific shooter, yes he is. He's a terrific shooter coming off of screens. Ty Jerome, I think Ty Jerome has a kiss in terms of a jump shot. It's sweet like a first kiss. Thank you, thank you. You guys are great, you guys are great. The third guy from Virginia's trio, DeAndre Hunter. A 6'7 explosive athlete, flies around the rim, makes plays above others. He can really get up. DeAndre Hunter has nothing on these Dolphins, though. Yeah, I really think that tomorrow you should wear that wetsuit as we sit here courtside. <laughs> I, it, 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 I have it on underneath right oh, now. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah, I'm just not exposing it to the whole nation yet. you got to ease into those kind of moments, Richard. You just don't come on national TV for the first time and with a wetsuit. Now, now tomorrow, we got a, we got a really good strong chance of that happening. But I hate to tell you, but you were just on national TV in a wetsuit. <laughs> In case you didn't quite connect the dots there. Malachi, Malachi, with, I'm telling those Dolphins, phenomenal athletes. Phenomenal athletes, quick, quick learners, high IQ. And again, tomorrow at noon, the Sea Lions play the Dolphins, and we're going to be there. Ter ter terrific athletic ability. Sebastian the Sea Lion, do not call him a seal. No. <laughs> They can, they can disagree, they can they can agree, they can spin in circles, they can back up and box out. There's so many things those Dolphins can do. And they love to engage with people. Like Did I you watch Flipper when you were a kid? Yes. Yes, yes a great show. Ago. I, I was just blown away, though, by how they just, they want to engage with you. They're like a, they're like a, a dog with flippers, you know? Not like a cat, they're like a dog. They, like, they, they, they want to be in your lap. I love Dolphins. Clearly not a cat. No, not at all. <laughs> that ball is tipped away. Active hands down low by DeAndre Hunter. That maybe was one of the most enjoyable hours of my life. In all seriousness, with those Dolphins. My wife and daughter were there, our camera crew. I mean, they, they just worked their tails off to get all those shots. And Linda, the trainer, just when you come to Atlanta's, you, you don't spend time with the Dolphins and, and, and the Sea Lions. You've missed a, a, a huge opportunity. Huge opportunity. 14-point lead for Virginia. 11:02 to play. We've got a timeout. Sebastian, Wisconsin has a phenomenal player named Ethan Happ. He has tremendous footwork around the block. Like, his footwork, yes, it's tremendous. He's very hard to guard because his footwork is as good as anybody in college basketball. Yes. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Sebastian has great feet, and so does this kid. Well, today he was a, a double-double, and that's what he's been all season long. He can have so good, so clever around the rim, and uh, tomorrow Wisconsin will be in those semifinals against the Sooners. Well done, Sebastian, though, huh? Yeah, no doubt. Bad boy mowers battle for Atlanta. So Oklahoma, Wisconsin, semifinal number one. Dayton against the winner of this game, semifinal number two. Sebastian light on his feet for 560 pounds. You know he can do a handstand as well, Sebastian. I don't know if Ethan Happ's awake right now. Maybe he's already getting his beauty rest for tomorrow, getting you know ready for uh, for another big ball game. But he, do you think he took Sebastian mimicking him and you using that as a jumping off point as a compliment? Absolutely. Okay. Did you see the footwork of Sebastian? The quickness? Uh, for a 500 pounder, I thought he got yeah, up, 560. up and down. Okay. Don't cheat him. 560 pounds. And the side to side footwork, he could cover ball screens. He can put you in a, in a spin on that low block. You talk about a load. Guard a sea lion for two hours. 
Foul on Middle Tennessee is their sixth here in the second half. And Virginia has fouled six times the entire game. Their ability to defend without fouling is exceptional. Right there with, with Wisconsin, by the way. Wide open look for Kyle Guy. He does not miss many of those. No, he does not. Well, they find those backside bombs awfully well, does Virginia. 15 points for Guy. Tough shot there, hand in the face. Reggie Scurry off the glass. He's got eight. It may be a hard question to answer because of the way this Virginia team is built and because of what they do defensively. So, so much a part of their identity. But is there one guy that you think makes Virginia go? That, that's the guy that they absolutely have to have they can't live without? And I guess Tony Bennett could be the answer, but I was thinking about one of the guys that no, actually plays. Well, I was going to say that the consistency of Tony Bennett, first of all, drives his program. But that's why I think Virginia is so hard to guard and hard to play against because they, they don't rely on that one guy. I mean, Guy can have an off night, they still win by 20. Ty Jerome can have an off night, and they can still beat a good team by double figures. And, you know, I, I think their collective voice really drives this team. As good as they are, individual defenders, and they, they, they play as one. Their sixth man, Richard, is their voice. And you listen to them talk on defense in terms of, I, I, I'm in the help, I'm in the gap, where we're choking the post, we're doubling the post, all those things, slide through, get under, go over. It's outstanding to watch. And I thought something that was interesting yesterday as we watched Virginia practice was watching Braxton Key, who is in his first year in this system and kind of how he reacted. You have three games in. Obviously, he's, he's been through the, the workouts leading up to the start of the season. But he was incredibly active in what you're talking about, talking on the defensive yes. end for a guy who's kind of still getting integrated into the program. Yes, he, he's, a, he's built to be a Virginia player. He's a high IQ guy. He's got really good strength. He can defend his spot really well. And you watch him off ball defensively, right? Like he, he has really dialed in quickly to this Virginia system. Boy, get a push, get a transition three if you can, you know. There it is. Arquar. Tough shot. He with the rebound. He's got six boards. To go along with five points. It's death by Boa Constrictor when you play Virginia. They just slowly squeeze the life out of you on both ends of the floor. DeAndre Hunter, set shot from three. Gets it back. Yeah, he, again, his value as a rebounder is tremendous. That's that right. a rebound from his rear end, and now a chance for a three-point play. Wow. I, I got to stand up and, and applaud that effort. I'm serious. It's not often you see a guy that kept the ball alive three times in, in one possession. You know what I'm saying? I don't care who wins the game, but an individual effort like that to tip it and get out on the floor and tip it and just stay with it. That, that was that was big time. And that was big time. Eight points now for Braxton Key. He had cleared out enough space that the ball was able to come all yes. the way down to it. Back to a 20-point lead. Virginia's biggest lead of the game was 21. Gosh, the, the, the ball sees three when you're playing against Virginia. The guy on the ball and two help defenders are always sitting there in gaps. The ball sees three for 40 minutes. DeAndre Hunter with the steal. Virginia with their sixth steal of the game, and that's right on their season average. They average seven. Shot clock inside five.
throws coming up for Jace Johnson. Good things happen to you in life if you just show up on time and work your absolute rear end off, just like Braxton Key did. That's the third, the fourth touch of the possession. He gets it to drop. Well done, two and white. Very well done. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers Builds a Better Mower. Mow with an attitude. Atlantis Paradise Island. Bahamas at heart. And McDonald's. It's one of the other things you'll see at Atlantis, the aquarium, and apparently kisses from animals. Your wife's here, right? Yes. I mean, I hope she's not the jealous type. It's a lot of kisses I've seen <laughs> for you from others on camera today. Oh, the love that the sea lions and dolphins have to share. I, I, this, I'm telling you, if you ever have the chance to come to Atlantis, spend the money, spend the time, whatever it is, to, to get in the water with the dolphins and spend some time with the sea lions, you will not regret it a wonderful, wonderful experience. It's really not very difficult to get here either. I mean, no, we're, no we're, not at all. You're, you know, eastern half of the United States. A lot of direct flight or one connection in Charlotte, Atlanta, Dallas, yes. somewhere like that. It's pretty easy. Weather has been absolutely perfect. I saw today. What did Dockett tell you earlier? He's like, hey, shut up. It's 84 and sunny. Just relax. <laughs> Listen to this. There's a town in Alaska, formerly known as Barrow, Alaska. They will not see the sun again for 65 days. It's that time of the year up there. They'll, they'll go till January 23rd in what is now called Akwiavik, Alaska. Hey, just go with Barrow. Yeah. Till January 23rd. They will see the sun again. And then you see a place like this, you're like, why are you living there? Right? You like to fish for salmon and hunt bears? In the dark. In the cold. In the dark, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Virginia ball going the other way. Cavaliers leading it by 19. Inside seven minutes to play. And you, you look at this Middle Tennessee team, and I know we talked some earlier about kind of what Nick McDevitt is dealing with this season and trying to construct a roster and build a guy and get, get guys to play hard. At this point, I don't even care what the final score is tonight. He's got something that he can build of, a build on off of this performance. That is. Yes, absolutely. Again, the, the DNA was not broke when he got the job at Middle Tennessee State. Kermit, Kermit Davis stands for all the right things, so he inherited that aroma. But when you look at what he's going to do, you can see he wants big guards to extend their defense to half court. Throw a 1-3-1 one, one on you and extend a 1-2-2. Two, two. Really make easy looks difficult to get. And he's in a league right now that you, know, have, you look at Conference USA, I, I think Marshall is going to be hard to handle. John Elmore, C.J. Burks, just they hit dagger threes on you in that uh, D'Antoni system. Charles Bassey at Western Kentucky is a pro waiting to happen, but he will rebuild this roster and become a major factor again in Conference USA over the next couple of years. Talking about Nick McDevitt, the head coach of Middle Tennessee State. Reggie Scurry scrapping for the loose ball there. He was fouled by Mamadi Iakite. You got turkey and dressing lined up for us tomorrow? Yes. And it might be on a yacht. I'm telling you. Oh. It, it could happen. It might happen if things go our can, way. Can, can we work together more often? I, I like <laughs> where this is going. We, we have two more days unless we right. completely mess it up. At that time, Gamble got the shot up over that automatic double team of the low block that Virginia can throw at you. They have a couple of ways to guard that uh, low block touch. Now they have Hunter back working the nail. They, they work the nail offensively and they defend it well defensively. He's a good player, isn't he? The Akite, he's a good player. He's got eight. Knows his role. Johnson dumps it off. There's a strong answer on the other end from Reggie Scurry. Now in double figures with 10 points. Gonzaga knocked off Duke. Win Maui, and people say, Well, Duke's gonna get better. You know what? Gonzaga's gonna get better as well. Killian Tilly didn't even play.
maybe their best player. Braxton Key with a three. He's now got 11. Shots falling for Virginia. Now their biggest lead up 22. And the shots aren't getting any easier for Middle Tennessee. Uh, no, no, nor will they. Virginia has good shooters in a system that takes good shots. It's amazing how that works out. Well, Hunter again working that free throw area against the zone. That was a walk by Diakite. Don't forget, coming up after us, back at Maui, third place game, Auburn and Arizona. It's the only game involving a top 25 team that has a late start. What, Key picks up his third foul. What, what a fist fight the SEC is going to be this year. I mean, you look at Tennessee, who I, I've seen in person this year a couple days now. They're, they're a legitimate top five team. Grant Williams had 24 and 10 today for Tennessee in a win against Louisville. Wow, that game was close for a while. I mean, it was. And Tennessee just delivered a couple of knockout blows. I think they went on a 17 0 run in the second half to kind of pull away. Like, Kansas did the same thing to Marquette. I knew Marquette doesn't defend well enough to keep that lead against Kansas. But Tennessee is going to be a juggernaut in the SEC. Auburn's right there with them. Kentucky's got to get better. They're not going to win the league or be, or be in the top two or three. LSU is good. Vanderbilt's good. So number two, Kansas won 77-68 over Marquette. They started the second half, by the way, down, down nine at the break, a 22-0 run to start the second half. Wow. That is a that, that is a run. Now there's a chance we could be on a run there's within the next 48 addressing? hours. I, I'm telling you, there's a chance you and I, if we play our cards right, we'll be on that bad boy. Tonight after Thunder Warriors over on ESPN at Sports Center with Bucci and Anderson. LeBron back in Cleveland. Jay Billis breaking down Duke's first loss of the year. And how about Captain Andrew Luck and the amazing season that he has had. It's all on Sports Center tonight after NBA on ESPN and of course streaming on the ESPN app. We didn't get to see the game, but Gonzaga going in that game against Duke, they were finishing 37% of their possessions with an on-ball screen, scoring like 1.3 points per off that on-ball action. They are such a highly skilled, talking about Gonzaga, offensive team. Yeah. Andrew Luck there, that thought, I heard Dockage talking about it. I know he's an indie guy, but uh, five consecutive games in well, which Andrew Luck has not been sacked. Yes. And, and for a guy that's had his, his medical history as of late, he needed that. He needed help. Yeah, yes. So the offensive line is great. He's getting the ball in his hands quickly. Virginia's really good. And that's, a, that's an obvious, oh, really? But I'm telling you, they, they, they are so solid. Like, where do you beat them? Where do you beat them? And they give you nothing on this end of the floor. And they just work you over on offense for 40 minutes. And finally, you break down. Fourteen turnovers tonight for Middle Tennessee. Has DeAndre Hunter had a pretty good game? Okay, well, I was going to ask you. How about that floater by Kihei Clark? All right, so if, if you're a basketball um, superstition person, can you talk about something that might be coming, or is that like a no-hitter in baseball? I, I don't know. I just know DeAndre's had a heck of a game. So, DeAndre, 15 points, <laughs> 8 rebounds, and 9 assists tonight. So he's, he's on the verge of a triple he's double. close. Okay. Do you know the last person to have a triple double for Virginia? For Virginia, the last guy to have a triple double. He's one of the best to ever play there. Ralph Sampson. Ralph Sampson in 1979. Wow. Listen to this stat line. Okay. 10 points. Or excuse me, 15 points. Okay. 22 rebounds. <laughs> 22 rebounds. And 10 blocks. <laughs> wow. Right now, DeAndre Hunter sitting on 15 points, 8 rebounds, and 9 assists. You know, he's not going to get it because he's checking out, but 
you're looking at one of the best all-around players in college basketball. Now, he's not going to average 20, but he's going to be a consistent 14, 15-point scorer. A high percentage shooter from the two and the three. He's going to defend his tail off. He's going to move the basketball with assists. And he's going to lock his guy down defensively night after night after night. He is a pleasure to watch play the game. Little Tennessee tried to get a, a, a it was a good, it was a good hard sprint out ball screen, boom, and dove right out of it with good speed. But uh, the, the big Huff kid moved as well. Virginia plays hard. Like I was really sur not surprised. I was very impressed with how hard they play. I don't think we talk about that enough in this Virginia program. Cody Statman has come into the game for Virginia, the freshman from Bentley Park in Queensland, Australia. Also, Austin Castra into the game. Jaden Nixon has come in. That three is short for Staten. Plus, you've got Huff and Marco Anthony. The only question is whether, at, at this point, is whether or not Grant Kersey is going to get into the game. I hope he's the only guy on the bench right there with his orange top he's got, this, got the shooting shirt on. Yes. He's a student manager. But he's in uniform. Yes, because Tony Bennett has rewarded his selflessness to the program. And he's a, really a heck of a basketball player. Like that Kersey name, it's a long line of, of uh, his grandfather officiating the NBA for a long time, back when Magic and Bird and those guys were going at it. But he got in a game, uh, I guess, on campus last week and made a three, and the place went nuts. And if he gets an open breakaway, he's going to punch it. Get Percy in the game, you know? Nixon short on the three there. And a hard man, he heard that. Mm. I think they're going to take a look and uh, see if it's a flagrant. Again, if, 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 if there's the potential for injury, officials can make a call. Chase Johnson went hard to the deck that time. You heard it when he hit the floor. You know, Nick McDevitt is fighting for his guys right now. Let's watch. It, it, no, I, I don't think it's going to be an F1 because both Virginia defenders were going for the ball up top. And I think they, they both got the ball up top, to be honest with you. But it put the offensive player in, a, in an awkward falling position. I don't think that's an F1. And, and I don't know if you assign the foul to Comfort and Nixon. I mean, I think it's Nixon coming across where he got him on the elbow. That wasn't a breakaway transition no, basket where you're trying to protect a guy that was a half-court drive. That's not a flagrant foul. No. No, it, it may be called a flagrant foul. We'll see. But the Virginia guys did what you would coach them to do then. Yeah, absolutely. They came over and attacked the basketball. I, Tony Bennett I'll, will get an explanation. I'll, I'll be see. surprised if it's an F1. Okay, they are going to assess a flagrant one here. Wow. We got free throws coming up for Jace Johnson. Well, that, that's that's what I was concerned with. It's, it's the protection of the player and the offensive player being a, in, in a vulnerable position. I don't agree with this. One. I don't know what Virginia's supposed to do. Uh, they, they don't. I know you don't teach guys to let guys come in and shoot a layup. Yeah. They went up to block the shot. They got all ball. Did the offensive player fall hard? Yes. But it had nothing to do with a hard foul or a flagrant one. But, and, and interestingly, Jay Huff's the one that was charged with the foul. If you watch it, it was Jaden Nixon yeah. who kind of got him on the elbow, but they give Huff the flagrant one. 
But again, you, you say protecting a player in a vulnerable position. Completely makes sense. I, I'm on yes. board. You want yes. to protect players. Yes. But if you put yourself in a vulnerable position by making a strong move to the basket, Things shouldn't can defenders be able to try and stop you? Yes, they should. I, I, I don't agree with that one. And I, I'm a big proponent of the officials. But when they blow the whistle, they get it right 91 to 93% of the time. And I went to their officiating clinic. They had four of them across the country before the season began. And they have been given some hard things to maneuver this year in college basketball. And, but, but that one, I thought, what, what, what did Virginia do wrong? What did the defender do wrong is the question I would ask if I'm an official judging that play. I don't think they did anything wrong. They came over and tried to block the shot. And they got a lot of ball up top. But we have missed, I think the game of basketball has missed over the last 10 or 15 years in protecting players and keeping them from injury. And I think they're trying to go down that road right now really hard to get some type of safety back in the game of college basketball. Cody Statman gets into the scoring column for Virginia with an offensive rebound and a putback. That three won't go for Carl Gamble. And Virginia, well, should be able to dribble it out and lost the handle. So a turnover here by Virginia. I tell you this, there'll be a lot of teams that play Virginia this year that won't go over 50 points. And Middle Tennessee has 52. They, they have nothing at all to feel bad about. Nick McDevitt has inherited a complete rebuild. He's done a good job of bringing talent with him the best he could. And uh, you, you see the style of play that he wants to play. And don't be surprised at all if they don't leave this island with, the, with at least one win. But again, Virginia, they did what the number four team in the country is supposed to do. They squeeze the life out of you for two hours. Let's take a look at our player of the game brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers. DeAndre Hunter, 15 points, eight rebounds, nine assists. What a night. Well, he's a complete player. You know, there's no weakness to his game. And he is uh, he's one of the top ten players in college ball, in my opinion. So we are all set for tomorrow. A couple of semifinal matchups, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, Dayton, Virginia, those on ESPN at 1.30 and 4 Eastern. We'll have the Florida-Stanford matchup and also the Butler matchup against Middle Tennessee coming your way tomorrow night. What a fun first day for quarterfinals here in the Bahamas. Yeah, it's been a fun four days in the Bahamas. The Dolphins, the Sea Lions, we've got a yacht we got to check out here in the next 24 hours. We've got basketball, we've got high-level basketball, we've got manta rays, we've got stingrays, we've got slides, we've got tunnels, we've got Christian James, we've got Oklahoma moving the ball, we've got Ethan Half with footwork like a sea, like a sea lion. We've got it all, Richard. 74-52, Virginia wins today over Middle Tennessee. We'll see you tomorrow. Coming up next on E2, Valley Invitational, Jason Benetti and Bill Walton. Good night from the Bahamas.